What we're going to be going over here is held to maturity securities classified as debt securities which are amortized to determine the interest revenue on these uh, securities and also we're going to calculate any gains or losses uh, if these securities are sold before their maturity date here. Now uh, for example here Corporation A purchases a 9% bonds they purchased $300,000 uh, worth that's their maturity value and they were purchased at 98 and three quarters or 98 0.75% of the par and they pay uh, they uh, were purchased here on 11x1 and they mature in three years and they pay interest semi-annually here on 11 and 71 each year and they're classified as health to maturity investments that is the company plans to hold these in uh, can classify them as that because they plan to hold them until they mature okay so point out here only debt securities can be classified as health to maturity since equity securities have no maturity date here so uh, debt has a maturity date we can classify them as held to maturity securities if we intend to hold them until they mature. Now to account for held to maturity securities you have to account for it at their amortized cost not at their fair value and you must amortize any discount or premium using either the effective interest method or another method such as a straight line amortization but in our case here we're going to use that effective interest method okay so let's move down and look at that effective interest method so the key is here uh, really we're dealing with two interest rates when we're using the effective interest rate we have our cash receipts and they're based on the stated rate of interest on the bond here in this case uh, uh, we had a nine percent stated rate and uh, semi-annually divide that by two we get a four and a half percent semi-annual interest right here so base uh, that's what we can base our cash receipts off but the other interest we're going to have to deal with here is we're going to have to in this case either you're given that yield or effective interest rate here it should be called the yield rate or you have to calculate it in our case here we're going to look at the example where we have to calculate this effective interest right here so that we're going to have to calculate and we can do that based on what we know here we're going to have uh, that's going to be based on Really, uh, the present value of our security here, and then we've got those interest payments here, plus we're going to have the maturity value or the future value of these security of this these bonds here. And based on that, plus our uh, number of payments here, we can calculate this interest rate that we have to do. And we'll do that with a financial calculator. So let's go up here and look at it here. This is where... Well, we'll this this is how it's laid out in your calculator here you get your number of periods here the interest rate is what we have to calculate here that effective interest rate in our present value our payments and our future value so you look for those keys in your calculator here and we can fill those out here so number of periods here that's easy enough there are three-year bonds a semi-annually two payments per year so we're going to have six payments here and this is based on semi-annual interest that we're going to calculate so we have six payments here put that into your number function here and then we have the present value here well what are what's the present value of that bond so that was what we purchased these bonds at 98 uh, and three quarters here times or percentage here times that 300,000 maturity value so their present value here is two hundred ninety four thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars so that you would put in put that in as a negative number because that's what you're paying for them here and then the payment here well that's easy enough we have to put that in here so our payment that's easy enough to figure out we already calculated that here well let's look at what is that payment uh, three years here times two we've got six semi-annual payments at uh, that gives us a four and a half percent interest rate here times those three hundred thousand dollars worth of bonds that uh, semi-annual payment here is going to be thirteen thousand five hundred dollars so you can enter that here as a positive amount and then the future amount that's the maturity value here that's that three hundred thousand dollars worth of bonds here so put that in hit your interest function here and you're going to come up with um, the effective interest rates going to come up here on a semi-annual basis at four point eight four three one percent so uh, annually here just multiply that times two here that gives you some nine point six some um, uh, six eight six two percent here so this is what we have to use here for our amortization that's we have to calculate that so uh, just for quickly to go over the amortization here well you set up your carrying amount here and that was that two hundred ninety four thousand seven hundred fifty and we're going to amortize that up to its maturity value here three hundred thousand we do that by uh, taking uh, doing it in this fashion here we take that uh, yield rate here 
at 4.8. 431% times the beginning carrying amount here 294,750, and that's going to give us the interest revenue here $14,275. So this is what we're going to actually be recognized as interest here on our income statement for this bond for that period here and that's that first period here um, July 1st the first payment here. So what we do here for our amortization we just compare it to the cash receipt so that cash receipt that each payment here is going to be for $13,500. Uh, we would compare that to the effective interest here at 14275 here and you can see uh, just taking the difference here you're going to come up with your amortized what they call the amortized discount here. Difference between those two values gives you $775 here. Add that to your beginning carrying amount here and you're going to get your new carrying value here. So just use that new carrying value here times that effective interest to come up with your new this interest revenue here for the period here compare that to your cash receipts you get your new amortized amount and just continue on in that fashion until you uh, amortize the whole amount here so you have to go through those calculations because this is what you're going to be recording on your income statement here as interest revenue and this is what you're going to amortize on your on your for your uh, in this case, it's going to be held to maturity bond amount here, and then your cash receipts are shown over here. Okay, so let's go up and let's look at how we'd record this now. Okay, so moving up here, again, we're going to look at the bond purchase here, the amortization, and we're going to in this case we're going to have a gain or loss based on selling it before its maturity date and I have to make a comment here here it was held as classified as a held to maturity investment here but we're going to get away with it here because it's going to be sold just like two months before it matures so in we're just going to look at it in that case here so we can still classify it as held to maturity as long as we hold it uh, until it almost matures here okay so what we have to do is we have to set up our accounts. We're going to have a cash account here and then uh, we're going to have what they call a health to maturity securities account here for this bond. Now we're not setting up any bond receivable or anything like that. We classified here as a health to maturity here on our balance sheet here uh, as a security here and I'm just noting a bond here. And then moving over on our income statement we're going to have to recognize the interest revenue and I've got a note here in this bond held to maturity here and we're also going to have a, a gain here that we're going to have to deal with so first looking at our issue when we purchase this bond here uh, uh, our cash receipts we would have credited that or reduced it here for that uh, purchase price are the what we purchased it at the discount here 294,750 294, uh, reduce our cash or credit or cash for that and then we would debit or increase our health to maturity here for the uh, bond security here uh, the debit that for 294 294,750. That's on the purchase date here 11x1 and then just going quickly through it here for our cash accounts that was that actual uh, cash receipt that we had for the semi-annual interest payments that we received 13,500 and I'm going through them here for the first uh, five uh, semi-annual payments here and the sixth one is where we're going to sell that bond before it matures here so debit your cash receipt here for those interest payments and that's the actual cash received here and then moving over to our held uh, maturity here we would debit that or in be increasing our held to maturity account by the amount uh, amortized amount of that discount and that comes right off our amortization chart here for each period and then over on our in for interest revenue or an income statement for this bond uh, this is the interest revenue that we actually recognize here that's that if the effective yield here that we're, we've got off that amortization schedule here and that we would record here and I'm showing the first five period our five uh, semi-annual payments here so you can see here our credits here to our interest revenue balance with the debits here to our held to maturity uh, for the bond uh, for that bond here with the debit here to our cash account so debits here balance with our credits now we come along here and normally if when this bond matures here if we did we did hadn't let's just say we hadn't sold it before its maturity date here all you would do is write it or uh, whatever you amortized it the up to here you'd just be writing it off at that maturity value here or credit 
or reduce your health to maturity account here for this bond and then you would go and you would be debiting your cash account for the amount of the maturity value here but since we've got a little uh, we sold it here uh, two and I want to just show it in this example here we sold it two months before it matures we are going to have to recognize any gain or loss on that here and we'll look at it real quick on how we do that here so again if the bond is sold before its maturity then a gain or loss would have to be calculated so in this case corporation A sells this investment in its bonds at a hundred and 101 percent here uh, slight that's what it was sold at a hundred and a half here plus the accrued interest and there's two, it was sold two months before the maturity date here it's going to be sold on 11 1 x 3 here and it matures here on 1 1 x 4 so there's really two months that we're dealing with here before it matures so what we would have to do for this calculation here uh, we'd have to determine the selling price that we did at 100.5 percent of the par or the maturity value here at 300,000 so that's going to give us a selling price here $301,500 now we have to take the bonds carrying value that we have off our amortization schedule here on 11-1 that would actually be the for that period here prior to the end of the year amortization and if you looked at a chart we're going to find $299,048 so that here we would have that's going to be subtracted from our selling price but then we have to add in this discount that would be amortized here and that's the discount here from 7-1 until 11-1 and that's four of the six months because that we had that period here from 7-1 until the end of the year here but since we sold it two months early we only have four of the six months here times the amortization uh, discount for that period of $982, we come up with $655. So adding that to our bonds carrying value here, we're going to come up with the total bond carrying value here, $299,703. Compare that to the selling price here, $301,500. And in this case, since our uh, carrying value here is less than our selling price we're going to have a gain on the sale of the bond here of seventeen hundred and ninety seven dollars if there was a loss then it would just be the opposite but either, in either case you have to determine if there's any gain or loss here and in this case we had the gain here so we go up to our let's look at our entry here on uh, on that 11-1 date here when they were sold 11-1 x3 here so we put in we'll credit our gain here for that amount here seventeen hundred and seventy nine dollars here on our income statement here so that's we recognize as a gain here and then moving up on our income statement we have that accrued interest that we're going to receive and that was for those four months here I didn't calculate it well we can look at it it's nine credit it for nine thousand dollars the accrued interest here would have been uh, that thirteen thousand five hundred for the period here for this semi-annual payment times four six or four of the six months here that would be nine thousand dollars that was seven one through eleven one x three here and then so what we do credit your interest revenue here for that accrued interest of nine thousand dollars and then moving over to our held to, the, to security our um, held to maturity account here in eleven one that goes in here to two we would credit that or reduce our account here by two hundred ninety nine thousand seven oh three that is the carrying value of the bond that we calculated down here so credit that reduce your held to security maturity um, amount by that amount here and then the other thing that we have our debit here would go to cash here of three hundred ten thousand five hundred well how do we get that that's the selling price plus the accrued interest that we're going to receive on it that was that three hundred and one thousand here for the five hundred for the selling price plus the nine thousand accrued interest here so if you just add up all your uh, balance your debits here uh, will balance with your credits here debit here of 310,500 balances with the credit here of 299,703 plus the uh, cash uh, or interest revenue that we recognize here of 9,000 and also that gain here of $1,797. Okay, so that's how we handle the, our, when we uh, have these held to maturity, uh, held to maturity securities here. Uh, in this case, it was a bond we had to amortize it here and 
we had to set up instead of classifying it as, as a bond or receivable or that we classified it as a held to maturity security here just noted as a bond here and in this case we had to take amortize our discount we recorded that here and then uh, the only other thing is here, you have to note here the interest revenue. We went through all this amortization here to get the actual interest revenue that we had to recognize here on this bond. Since it was issued at a discount here, we purchased it at a discount, we had to determine the effective yield here based on that. One other thing, I didn't note it here, but on these cash receipts here, these 13500 there is a technical deal here when the... Um, Actually, the bond here at the end of the year in 1231, we actually hadn't received the $13,500 yet. We would have received it here on 1-1, one, one, the, the next day here, the beginning of the next year on the, on the interest payment date. So what we would have set up here, rather than going strictly to the cash account here for uh, each of those uh, 1231 end of the year uh, payment dates, we would have had to set up some interest receivable account. and that would be only at the end of the year 1231 and then the next day or the next month when we or neck on 1 1 when we actually received the payment then we'd move it out of the receivable account we'd move it into the cash account that's only the only other thing and i'm not showing it here but that is the techni uh, technica technically you'd have to do that here to be accurate but just remember here with the held to maturity securities you're going to have to set up your amortization for it. You have to determine the amortization based on those two interests that we talked about, the stated rate of interest on the on the security, and also we had to determine the yield rate. If it's given to you, then you don't have to go and calculate it, but in this case, we had to calculate it based on what we knew on this bond. We knew it's the present value of the bond, we knew the future value, we knew the payments, then we were able to go and calculate that effective interest rate to determine our effective yield or an effective interest revenue on this bond. Okay, so that takes care of our example here where we have this held to maturity security and it's when they're debt securities and you have to amortize them to determine the actual interest expense or interest revenue that you'd be receiving on those securities.